I am not a 911 operator myself, however one of my clients is. She said a woman called 911 saying that her baby was barely breathing and turning blue. The woman sounded bored, uninterested. My friend said to her that she could talk the woman through baby CPR so that she could try to save the baby's life in the meantime before the ambulance arrived. The woman said that she didn't want to do the CPR. My client kept repeating to her, I can help you save your baby's life. Please just listen to me and go in with the baby and follow my directions. And the woman was very adamant about not wanting to go back with the baby. So my friend stays on the phone with her while she waits for the ambulance. And the woman says that she went back to check on the baby and thinks that the baby has stopped breathing altogether. Still sounding bored or like she was really fucked up on drugs. My friend says that she told her boss or whoever would need to be told about this and then she had to take a break and go outside and cry. She just couldn't believe a mother would not even attempt to save her child or that she just sound so uninterested in the dying child in the next room. I'm an IT guy for a law enforcement agency. I've heard many calls alongside dispatchers. The one that sticks out to me happened around three years ago. I was actually repairing some equipment in our dispatch center when the call came in and had to immediately pull the recordings as we all knew it would have been requested. I listened to it all happen and did my best to assist. An 18 year old called in hysterics and he asked for an ambulance because his mom was shot. We of course dispatched immediately but they were in the middle of nowhere and the closest ambulance was 30 minutes away. As the call continued we got him to tell us what happened. He had pulled out his hunting rifle to clean it before going hunting the next day. It was an older style bolt action rifle with no safety and an extremely light trigger pull. He had just pulled it out of the case and he had accidentally hit the bolt on the side of the table which caused the gun to fire. The bullet hit the mom in the stomach while standing less than 30 feet away. The father and son were both attempting to stop the bleeding and the son immediately called 911. At first you can faintly hear the mom in the background saying, It's okay, you didn't mean it baby. It's okay, I love you both. She just repeated this over and over. The father was praying quietly and the son was sobbing and giving us all the info as we tried to assist. The sounds of the call will always haunt me. The son just shouted over and over near the end, Mama, God, Mama, I'm so sorry, Mama. Don't die, Mama. Mama, please. The mom made it nowhere close to the ambulance arrival. The dispatchers were cool and collected and worked like an amazingly well-oiled machine during the whole call. When the call was over, we all just sat there in silence. Even typing this up makes me all teary-eyed. Not an emergency call operator, but I do answer the phone in the police station countless times a day. Mostly non-emergency calls, questions, or queries that aren't urgent or life-threatening, along with everything else that you can think of. I won't say where I work, but I've taken a few interesting calls. Many from people with bad mental health issues that just want someone to ramble to, but I digress. One early evening, I took a phone call from a woman who had just come home and found their child had slit their wrists in the bath while they'd been out. That call, those screams, the looks on the faces around me, faces, that they just realized what call I was taking, I'll never forget. I'm going to just assume that the shock of the scene sent her into an utter meltdown and she called the first number her brain told her to the local police. I had colleagues running out the door and radioing for ambulances within 10 seconds of me picking up the phone, but I stayed on the phone with her for about 5 minutes while the emergency services converged on the house. 
Those five minutes on the phone, hearing her go through every convincible emotion within such a brief period of time, will honestly haunt me for the rest of my life, from anger to disbelief to hysterics to uncontrollable laughing to dead silence and back to anger. I just kept trying to keep her calm and to assure her that help was coming. I was still on the phone, I heard my colleagues talking to her. Her child, though, had passed away. I hope I did some good. I never did hear back about it. I went home a few hours later, and I never asked my colleagues about it. I worked as a fire and an EMS dispatcher for a short period of time, and this call is one reason I left. It was my first night on my own as a dispatcher, and I had good luck throughout my training until that point. No traumatic deaths or anything. That all ended on my first night starting with this call. It's May 5th, right before midnight, and the call comes through, and all I hear is a woman screaming in chaos in the background. Finally, I make out someone in the background saying, help her get out of the pool. And I immediately sent the call as a drowning. Someone takes the phone from the screaming woman and tells me that they just found a baby in the pool and she's blue. I start CPR instructions, trying desperately to be heard over the mom, still screaming in the background. Our crews arrive and I hung up. We got the rest of the story later. There were about 20 drunk adults in the backyard right by the pool when a two-year-old little girl wandered out of the living room looking for her mother. No one knew how long she had been in the pool before someone finally noticed that tiny floating body. It may not be the worst call anyone's ever had, but I will never see a pool the same way and I'll remember it forever. I was a 911 operator in Mobile, Alabama the day Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast. We started getting lots of calls from New Orleans and the Mississippi Gulf Coast for some reason. I guess they started routing to us after all 911 centers to the west of us started going down. Anyways, I got a call from a woman who said that she was trapped in her house on Gordon Street between Florida and Law. I was confused at first because we have a Florida street. And mobile and after checking and double checking I was not able to find her address I asked her what city she was calling from and she said I'm in New Orleans I tried to route her to New Orleans 911 and New Orleans fire department but I could not get through she started screaming and said that the water was coming up into the attic where she was I told her to find something heavy and break the attic vent out so she could get out onto the roof, but the vent was too small for her to crawl through. She sat down and started crying. I told her I would stay on the line for as long as she wanted me to. I stayed on the line and listened to her as she cried, prayed, cussed, and prayed some more. A little while later, I could hear her struggling to keep her head and the phone above water. Then the phone went dead. To this day, I don't know if she lived or died. I quit 911 three months after Katrina 